Was he what you expected in there tonight? Uh, of course, I always expect to submit the fight. So the first round, I think my game plan went well. I took him down, I mount, I stayed, you know, punching. He was able to stand up. The second round, the same happens. I don't know why the referee stand us up, because I was pretty much mounted on him. And I was, you know, punching. I was not, like, inactive. And then the third round, I was winning, and he was not coming too much over me. So, you know, I tried to find the best timing to take him down, don't get big risks. Uh, I wasn't able to do in the third one, but of course, when you're fighting, you want to finish the fight, and that's how I did in many of my fights, and I did the last fight. But he was pretty good on defending my, my thing. Yeah, he had a ton of momentum coming into this. I mean, he'd been, I think, seven of eight, and uh, hadn't lost since he'd moved up to, moved up to welterweight. Mm -hmm. um, what does it kind of mean to you to kind of stop somebody's momentum like that? Who, somebody who felt like he was going to be the next big thing in the division, yeah. and and you're kind of you're the old dog, man. <laughs> yeah, hard yeah. For you know, I'm 41, and I'm proud that I keep doing well, and I'm feeling well, and keeping up with those younger guys, and I feeling thanks to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and all that, give us this opportunity to fight without getting too much damage. And, but he was tough. He was pretty good. He, actually, he was have a very good jiu-jitsu, not just the, the stand-up game. He's a black belt too, isn't he? I, mean, I don't really know, but I think maybe so. Maybe not at your level. Yeah, but but, I, but yeah, but he he had a black yeah. black belt level for sure. You know, his defensive skills yeah. were pretty good. Talk a little bit about uh, you know you talked the other day about kind of seeing the end of the road eventually, yeah. but but. Uh, well, let me ask you this. If things hadn't gone your way tonight, uh -huh. would you have come back for, for more fights? For one more, for sure. Okay. You know, anyways, my goal was winning or lose tonight. Thanks God I won, but even if I would, you know, lose the fight, I would come on my next fight. That's the last in my contract because I, that's something that I want to do, you know, is my plan, at least one more fight. And I hope I will do this one in November in Sao Paulo, in my hometown. Hopefully with Diego Sanchez that been asking to fight me for like a year or so. And after that, I will see, you know, if I want to do a couple more fights or no. If the UFC wants to, but for sure, if not the end of this year, you know, next year, 2020, will be my last fights. Okay, so without question, you think next year, would be, will be your last year. Yeah, if, next. If it's not, if it's not this year, you yeah. know, next year. I've been just in the USC 12 years, and I feel pretty healthy and pretty well. I love what I do. And don't get me wrong, I love going to academy every day and training as hard as I can. I love to learn. But I have other plans, you know. I have affiliate academies. I have my, my team. And I have seminars that I give around the world. And something that I really love and I think belongs also to my mission of developing and spreading Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And of course, UFC is the biggest platform, but when you you in an event like UFC, you gotta be really, you know, save like 80% of your time for that. And I wanna do other nice stuff like I did, you know, documentaries that I did as an interviewer, you know, in combat in Brazil for the UFC also. So other things that, you know, gives me pleasure also. Of course, it's not the same money as, you know, fighting, but, you know, I never been in this thing for money. I always been because I love it. So with your career coming to an end pretty soon, by the end of maybe just one more year, mm -hmm. um, we asked you earlier this week, you're not too worried about winning the title. You, you can retire without the belt and you'll be happy. What are your goals for these next couple of fights? What are you asking for? My goal is pretty much win the fights for sure, you know. And if I can catch up with Cerrone, you know, and because now I'm the second with most wins, and with 21 wins, and Cerrone has 23. So if I can do three more fights and win, you know, and he's not keep, he doesn't keep winning, and I can pass him, would be great. It's something that would be great to retire if. And the title is something that first you gotta win, you know, many fights in a row. And second, doesn't depend on you. It's not in your control, it's out of my control. So let's see, you know, I win a couple more fights and they say, you wanna fight? Of course, sure, it would be great. But I can't put all my, all my chips on that. You know, I, I need to, to 
be focused on training, learning, and be the best athlete that I can be. If you pass Cowboy as the, the most all-time wins in the UFC, what would that record mean to you? Miss, you know, a lot because it's it's hard to be in the UFC one year and, and you know fight a couple of fights and I. Today I did my third fight in the UFC, and I've been in the UFC for 12 years. So that means a lot for me, you know, to be in the biggest event in the world for so long, and keeping up with the best for so long. Uh, what means for me is that when I set up a goal, I know a goal, you know, grinding and grinding and grinding, and never, never stop. So it's something that it gives me gives me confidence that I and I know that everything that I gonna do after my athlete career you know I will do I will have the same mindset